All righty. Well, let us get started. I know we are small in number today, but we will be mighty in faith. It's um, There is a lot of sickness going on, but we also have people out. Um, Kathy and Kevin are celebrating their wedding anniversary with the special trip in this weekend. So we have some who are working to get healthy and others who are celebrating. And that's that's as it should be. Uh-oh, what are we missing? There it is. <laughs> that does help, doesn't it? All right. Announcements. This evening is the Rose Park Christmas pageant at 7 p.m. If you're interested in coming out and being blessed by a reenactment of the manger story that is happening tonight. This Wednesday, during the daytime, daylight hours, because I know some people don't love getting out at night, but this Wednesday from three to seven, I am sponsoring an open house at the Parsonage. It's not the kind of thing you have to come and stay for four hours. You can come at three and stay for a little bit, stay for a little longer. You can come at 630, it's okay. But come out and um, see y'all's house. Speaking of other people's houses, it is it does belong to all of you. And I wanted to take this opportunity to invite people by to check out decorations and just see the house in general, because some of you haven't been there in a while, I understand. So that's a good thing. Then um, this coming Saturday, which is Christmas Eve, we will have our candlelight Christmas Eve service at 730. And then Christmas morning, we will have a service at Rose Park for all the charge for Christmas morning at 10. Other announcements? I will put this here in this part because it's certainly not a prayer concern. I did, um, I received a card from Betsy Philippi and I also got to visit with her this week. So, um, but she just wanted, I will hang this in the back just to all my church family and at Madison and just wanting to wish you all a Merry Christmas and know that you are in her prayers and her thoughts. And um, she's doing very, very well. And she wanted me to share that with all of you all. All right. Let us get started with our worship. Service. recorded music today before I knew all of these other pieces would be in flux I knew that Kevin was not going to be here Evelyn is doing better with her toe and her infection but she was not ready to be back either so I did um, take the opportunity versus back and forth back and forth back and forth to record our hymns and our um, prelude and offertory the prelude that you just heard part of was is part of a series of duets that a dear friend of mine, I call her my musical soul sister, 
and I do each week, we do these virtually. She records her parts and sends them to me, and then I take them and do other things with them and add my part. So that's what we will listen to today, but she is a blessing to me and to all who get to hear her play. She is quite, quite a, an extravagant organist. All right, let us stand and begin our worship service as we join together in our call to worship. This is the fourth Sunday of Advent, a time to rejoice in the wondrous things that God is doing. The time is fast approaching, not for parties or presents, but for the awareness of God's loving gift to us, the gift of the Christ child. Thanks be to God, who again reminds us of God's eternal love. All right, please join me in our morning prayer found in your bulletin. Lord of all life and all seasons, help us to open our hearts to hear the words of promise and love that you send to us. Like Joseph, may we trust in your abiding love and power. Prepare us to receive your gift of grace and peace. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I had a couple of weeks, a few weeks ago at Rose Park, my pianist was unable to be there and all of our backup people had not been able to come. So I had done the service and I had 
remembered and done the Gloria Patria and the doxology last night. I don't know, sometime during the night, it's like, oh, I didn't put that on my playlist. I have to. <laughs> so this morning, my first job was to put those. So we're covered. At this time, we will have the Douglas family come up and do and lighting. All oh, praises the Lord. Today is the fourth Sunday of Advent. We relight our first Advent candle, which reminds us of the promise made to us long ago. We realized the second advent that lines up to embrace the king, prophet, and mercy of the We realized the third advent that reminds us to praise God and all the things. As we light the fourth advent table, we remember God's grace shown to the family and Joseph. We can do this by accepting God's praises and simply share God's grace and pleasure. Luke 1 46 through 55. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. Now on all generations will call me blessed. The mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones. He has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but he has sent the rich away at the he has taught his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. The last is challenge, that it would show us hope and proclaim peace, deep everlasting joy. And today, our presence is the peace of love, and a sign that no matter our circumstances, no, we are not alone. God, be with us. Prepare ourselves. It is the gift of Christ. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all. Please join together in the prayer for illumination. Holy, holy Spirit, Spirit, Holy Word, may your love leap within us and your stories seal themselves to our hearts. As we prepare to welcome Jesus Christ, may we first welcome your wisdom to our worship. Amen. The first reading today is from Isaiah chapter 7 verses 10 through 16, found on page 636 of your Pew Bible. Chapter 7, verses 10 through 16. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol or as high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. 
And Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary mortals that you weary my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land before whose two kings you are in dread will be deserted. The epistle reading this morning is from Romans chapter 1, verses 1 through 7, found on page 152 of your Pew Bible. Romans 1, verses 1 through 7. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, the gospel concerning his son, who was descended from David according to the flesh, and was declared to be son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles for the sake of his name, including yourselves who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all God's beloved in Rome who are called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. May God bless all who hear these readings. All right. Do we have any birthdays? I know we have an anniversary. But any birthdays coming up in this week? We had one of our youngest at Rose Park. We were giving out. We had a couple of birthdays. And I think she's about three and she's raising her hand. And, you know, you can tell this hesitancy to be called on, but wanting to share anyway. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we should celebrate that one too. It's so sweet. But any earthly birthdays here this morning or this week? No? All right. Let us move to our gospel lesson, which we finally get to be on page one of the New Testament section of our Bible for Matthew 1, verses 18 through 25. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, Son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what has been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel which means God is with us. When Jesus awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus. When we consider the story today, we have to remember that we left Mary last week with these her answer. Of I am yours, how shall I serve you? Isaiah tells us that the Lord will give us a sign. And it's funny, my Depart DO Department of Transportation people aren't here as I'm going to talk about signs today, road signs. Um, Isaiah, you know, he tells us to get, that the Lord will give us a sign. But have you ever noticed that reading signs can be tricky? 
whether we're talking about those physical road signs or those signs that are a little less clear. When we're traveling to a new place, you rely upon the readability and accuracy of signs. What happens when the signs seem to be pointing at kind of an angle? Sometimes something has hit it and it's kind of twisted it. I don't know what twist them, but I have come to more than one place in my life when I didn't know where I was going that couldn't quite decide which way the sign was pointing. I appreciate those areas where you get those preliminary signs before you get to an intersection, busy streets, where it tells you that you are approaching a particular intersection because otherwise you might get in the middle of it and say, oh, here it is, and you're not in the right lane, you're not ready to turn, and you're not sure what to do. Even with GPS, that wonderful invention that tends to keep us on our path a little better, there are times that that is hard to follow, but sometimes we still need to follow the signs. When it gets down to the nitty gritty and maybe a road has changed, maybe that's it's not quite listed there for us. So we still have to follow those signs. Sometimes, have you ever seen a sign that was partially blocked by a tree that had overgrown? And just the part you seem to need to read, couldn't read it. Or sometimes part of the sign over time has gotten so it does no longer reflects and it's hard to read. And then when there we encounter those new traffic patterns, if you've been down in Pantops in the last two to three weeks, maybe a month, where they've totally redone the intersection and it's kind of like Zion Crossroads, and you're like, there's a lot of wiggles. I think this past week they've been repaving, but prior to that, there were a lot of markings on roads and you just truly had to trust that you were going the right way because it's not the normal way. Needing to be able to read the signs. For us, the bystanders of a much later generation to the signs of that Moses or that Moses, that Joseph and Mary were looking at, the signs that the Pharisees were looking for. It seems for us that those signs are so obvious that who could have missed them? But for those in that moment, maybe too, they too struggled to see as we do in our world today. It seems that sometimes those signs announcing the arrival of Jesus were not always placed on the main thoroughfares for those to gather in. And yes, the priests and religious leaders had been awaiting the arrival of the Messiah for generations. They knew the signs for which to look. They knew what they were looking for. But that in that lied their problem because they had preconceived ideas about the details. And because of that, they were blinded to any other way of the arrival of the Messiah. They couldn't imagine that God would send a baby who would arrive without all the trappings or all the fanciness of a royal birth. Last week, as we considered the poor peasant girl who was chosen to carry the Son of God, we couldn't imagine how she would have been selected. Surely God would make the announcement through those who had studied the word. Joseph, who is of royal descent, he is a descendant of David, technically. He didn't act or look like someone of royal descent. He would led a good life as a carpenter, and he displayed no royal comparisons to his ancestors. Now, Mary and Joseph lived in a time with very specific rules regarding marriage. In those days, a betrothed couple spent little time together prior to the actual wedding. And women who conceived children out of wedlock were subject to strict application of the Jewish law. Now, Matthew, nor do any of the Gospels, give us a very detailed account of how Joseph discovered the pregnancy. But we can imagine that he was stunned, in shock, since he had not been with Mary. We read in the passage that Joseph is called a righteous man. 
And we immediately see this righteousness when he chooses not to storm out and expose Mary and subject her to public ridicule. Mary and Joseph enter this moment from two very different places. Mary, who is so filled with joy following the encounter with Gabriel, and Joseph, who is shocked. He must think, he must contemplate the situation of which he has discovered. And sadly, within their tradition, Joseph really had only two choices to make. One was to divorce her quietly, which I found that word interesting because when they're not, they hadn't been married yet. What do you mean divorce? But in that tradition, this whole idea of the betrothal, it's a, it's an agreement. And so he could divorce her and walk away quietly. Or he could have her publicly humiliated where she might be stoned or even exiled from their community. In that time, wedding agreements were different. And to walk away from this agreement was a divorce. And as Joseph considered his options, he was planning to walk away. The least of the punishments and leave Mary alone to have her baby. I'm sure that Joseph felt betrayed and alone. After all, he had not had the benefit of divine intervention to help him understand. The angels had not appeared and given him the story yet. His righteousness is evident in his decision to take time to consider what he must do. I can imagine Joseph struggling through restless nights as he tried to wrap his head around this situation. During Joseph's time of discernment on one of those restless nights, God visited Joseph in a dream. And his request of Joseph was to take Mary as his wife, a decision that would result in personal shame because the timing was obvious and that they would, he and Mary would endure a life of future difficulties. God began his words with Joseph, son of David. Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Once again, Joseph, an ordinary carpenter, an ordinary person in an ordinary town, was asked to be part of the extraordinary. As a descendant of David, the choice of Joseph fulfilled another part of the prophecy that the Messiah would be a rightful son of David. In Romans this morning, we heard Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through the prophets in the Holy Scriptures, the gospel concerning his son, who was descended from David according to the flesh. Joseph, a son of David, was chosen to be the earthly father of Jesus, as had been foretold in the scriptures for generations. As we heard again this morning, and all this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Within this dream, Joseph is confronted and reminded of two long-standing themes that follow our choice today to follow Christ. Jesus was reminded that he is a part of the people of God. When he was presented, Joseph, a son of David, it was a reminder. And that scriptures provide us with our answers. We as Christians must know who we are. Famous gospel hymn, favorite one. I know whom I have believed. And we are to read and study scripture so that we know the way. We must never forget 
to whom we belong. That was the purpose of that greeting. Joseph, son of David. Both Mary and Joseph choose to be faithful stewards of God by accepting this unexpected turn of events that would forever change their lives and forever change the lives of us all. Both Mary and Joseph chose to be faithful stewards of God by expect, accepting this unexpected turn of events. Another important part of the story is their immediate acceptance of their calling. There are many stories in the Bible, starting back with Moses, who's like, oh God, I'm slow of tongue. This really isn't my thing. Surely somebody else could do better. Jonah, who was sent to Nineveh and said, no, nah, they're not going to listen to me. Story after story where people look for a way out until all their options have faded. And then they say a reluctant, okay, you have me, God, send me. Through Jesus, we learn what trusting God, fully trusting God means. I am yours. What can I do to serve you? And Joseph knows, despite knowing that, follows, despite knowing that he and Mary will be considered outcasts and shamed for their sinful actions. Think, Joseph had worked for years to establish himself as a businessman, a carpenter of good standing. But in saying yes, in a moment, it is all gone. Joseph's shame is a foreshadowing of the shame that Jesus would bear for us when he accepts the sins of the world. Joseph, Joseph is indeed a righteous man to whom we should all work to emulate. Righteousness simply means being faithful to our covenants. Our covenants. Love God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. And love one another. Joseph kept his covenant. He was a keeper of the covenant. And what he needed when he was trying to decide were other options. Do I walk away? Do I expose Mary? God gave him another option in the dream. Now, when we consider dreams, dreams are funny things, aren't they? Sometimes we awaken thinking, what in the world? I think Joseph must have had one of those moments. How did Joseph know that he had received the word of God in his dream? Sometimes we think, I'm reminded of Scrooge in A Christmas Carol. Maybe I have eaten something, some moldy cheese that upset my stomach. But Joseph acted on that dream. He was told an extraordinary tale that would challenge even the most righteous among us. Mary, you're betrothed. She is with child. It is from the Holy Spirit. What? How can this be? We are not privy to the entirety of the dream, but perhaps Joseph received a glimpse of the big picture, just what he was ready to see and believe. Joseph, an ordinary man with ordinary dreams of a reputable life, was suddenly called to accept the extraordinary. When he awoke, he could have certainly said, Pfft, that couldn't be, and walked away. But no, he had a new direction for which he was called. The child that is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, as with Mary, would have to endure to accept this incredible world-changing notion that somehow God had chosen Mary, his Mary, to be the vessel through which the Savior of the world would come. So let's go back to this idea of reading signs. Some signs are straightforward in their direction, while others are less clear. One thing with signs, though, when we reach a sign, we must make a choice. Maybe a choice to go this way, to go this way, to turn around. 
Mary and Joseph made the choice to be servants of God. Our choices are not always easy to make, and many times our choices are even harder to keep. Joseph made the choice to believe the word of God and follow as he was called, despite the troubles that would likely come. When you read about Joseph, you hear and you consider there are many who think that Joseph was kind of a minor player in the story. He had few lines to say. And honestly, maybe his job, if you were writing a play, he would have been a sign. Joseph, as was traditional in this culture, was called by God to name this child. And of course, God supplied the name in his dream, Jesus, Emmanuel. Joseph could have easily walked away, as would have been appropriate. But he chose to be part of the story, to be a sign that this child is the fulfillment of the prophecy. It's important for us to note that there are two names for the child given in this passage. The most common one, of course, is Jesus. This name comes from the Hebrew, Hebrew, Yeshua, sometimes written as Joshua. And that translates as God saves. This is the name that appears throughout the rest of the gospel. But the other name, which appears only here, remember, Emmanuel. God is with us. We love that name. And we must remember it more than just at Christmas time. The name itself is a sign. God is with us. We certainly ought to remember it when we come, when it comes to us making choices about how we respond to what happens to us and what happens around us. We are not alone. This is the good news, my friend. We are not alone. We are not simply bystanders to our own lives. We are asked to take action, to be with God, to choose God as he has chosen us. And maybe we ought to pay more attention to our dreams, the waking ones and the sleeping ones. Who knows? Maybe an angel is talking to us. Let us pray. Holy Father, thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, your greatest gift of love to your people. Fill our hearts with such love, opening our hearts to accept your great love for us. Overflow our hearts with your love so it may pour out on the world. In this place, on this day, you have called us together to hear your words of encouragement and to remind us that you are with us. We don't have to rush about in order to have Christmas. For the witness of your love is here among us right now. Open our hearts and help us to proclaim your presence. Help us to reach out to one another in joy and peace. Help us to love others as you have loved us, even those who aren't always easy to love. For following you means loving others as you love us. Lord, thank you for your great gift of Jesus as we celebrate Christmas. May we ever walk in your love and show the world to whom we belong as your disciples by the love we show to others, keeping Jesus, your son, close in our hearts. Amen. If you will return to your bulletins, we will respond responsibly. Who will come to save us? Who will the Lord send to heal our wounds? God sent a child. But a child has no voice, no power, no influence. Why would God send a child? A child needs to be loved and cared for. We need to pay attention to a child. We need to reach out in love. After all, aren't we God's beloved ones? We 
Commissioner Hemmel to him number 242, Love came down at Christmas. Love came down at Christmas, love, a oh, lovely love divine, love was born at Christmas, star and angels gave the sign, worship we that we're quite as familiar with, but the words are just so beautiful for the Sunday of love. As we consider our prayer request today, you may be seated. Let us keep in mind all those who are struggling with health issues. We have quite a few within our community, both here at Madison and Rose Park, who are not, some who are simply just not feeling well and not willing to take a chance to expose others to what might be a cold or might be something more. We are still struggling with some victims of COVID. My dad was actually di diagnosed during the week. It sounded pretty croaky at the time, um, but he's doing much better. When I spoke to him this morning, he called needing some needing help with something. And he, but I talked to him yesterday as well. He was he was doing much much better. They did do a chest X ray and uh, made sure that no pneumonia or anything was in place, so that is good news. Um, others that we need to lift up this morning. We continue to lift up Danny. It was so wonderful to have you be able to come up and share as part of the Advent reading. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. We do have those on our prayer list that are always in our prayers. As I said, I visited with Betsy, and she was doing very well, so that's that's a good thing. I know that she has endured some health things over the past couple of years. All right, let us go to our Lord in prayer. Gracious and loving Lord, we come to you. We have concerns on our hearts, concerns for those who are struggling with illness. Be with them, keep them strong. As we take this time, this family time, may we be able to celebrate together as families. Maybe we be able to take time to remember, to think, to worship your son, who you sent to us to save us in the form of a baby, a baby for whom we must care. Be with all the doctors and medical personnel who are working tirelessly. They want to be home with family, but they come each day and serve the needs of your children. Be with our military around the world and their families here at home. Holidays are an especially challenging time. Be with all who work to serve you in this world, in all forms, in all matters. We boldly come to you with these requests in the name of your Son, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we will collect our offering. Thank you. 
music. All right, please rise. accepted. We are your children. We are your servants. Please show us how we must go so that we can bring more children to the light. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is verse 1, 2, and 5 of the first
Thank you all for coming out today. Place your trust in God, for God is with you. Listen carefully for God's loving whisper in this time. The words will give you healing and hope, peace, joy, and love. Go in peace, and may God's peace always be with you. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.